Constable. David Crompton there, the Chief Constable of South Yorkshire Police, uh, the current Chief Constable, I should say, speaking earlier to the BBC. Let's get a word with Mike Pallett, himself a former police officer on the line for us. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Simon. Uh, how do you think ordinary rank-and-file police officers, especially in South Yorkshire, will be feeling tonight? Well, I think it's not just rank-and-file officers in South Yorkshire. I've been inundated um, today with calls from South Midlands and the North. And, and I think it's like everybody else. And, and you know, I must say, um, first of all, Simon, you know, justice for the, the families is absolutely vital. And they must be going through, well, unimaginable um, feelings tonight. Um, you know, it, it's, it's so important that the truth comes out. And I think that is what's been echoed to be by certainly the rank and file um, of police officers right across the country and including um, Liverpool fans yeah. as well. Do- doesn't, it sh- doesn't it shatter our faith in the police? Because this was a cover-up. Well, it just looks like, you know, what I'm, you know, trying to get my head around, I mean, there's no excuse whatsoever for police trying to cover this up. There, there could only be one reason for that, was that to, to try and sort of de- de- take away the blame from poor leadership um, and mismanagement of that fateful day. Um, but to get over 160-odd police officers is, you know, I'm trying to get my head around it. Um, nobody that I've ever worked with, and people I've spoken today, you know, nobody wants to be working with people who, let's say, are corrupt um, and are willing to falsify evidence. But this, to me, needs to be, like you say, it needs to come out now. 160-odd statements. Now, even, you know, crossing out things like the amount of radios that were there, that all, you know, why on earth would anybody want to remove that? And I've heard stories of, you know, post-it notes being put on statements saying, you know, from senior officers saying, well, that needs to be amended, that needs Mm -hmm. to be amended. Well, if any cover-up whatsoever here... And, and those culpable for, for that cover-up, Simon, make no mistake about it, um, police officers nationally won't accept anything other than, than justice, too. And, you know, it's so vitally important for not only the people of Liverpool, but to football fans nationally, and, and I'm a big football fan myself. Um, I, I just cannot get my head around yeah. why. Um, you know, if mistakes are made, I mean, I've heard it come out today of a, of a big conference of senior officers, well, what are we supposed to do? And, I said, and the one thing I said is being open and honest. And if things go wrong, then you've got to say so, because, you know, mistakes are made. This mistake um, is just turned into absolute disaster and total tragedy of a, of a scale not obviously witnessed in, in, mm. in, our, in, in our country. The, the ordinary police officer who gave those statements, they wouldn't have known, would they, that their uh, statements were due to be or going to be altered or amended or redacted in any way. They would have given those statements in good faith. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's, there's, there's the police officers that were actually on scene. And, you know, take aside the senior police management on that fateful day. You go to the, to the, to the front-line police officers who were there, they were also, along with members of, you know, people from Liverpool, people from everywhere, were trying their best to save as many lives under appalling circumstances. Um, And, you know, you've just got to picture yourself, you know, what you are witnessing, not just the police officers that were there, everybody was trying to do the best in in absolutely appalling circumstances. And it even gets worse, you know, how must, um, the, those people, those, the, the, the parents and families of all those people be feeling when you're hearing horror stories and it, it just seems to be worse than I possibly could have mm. imagined coming out when potential lives could have been saved if, you know, it, it, it just doesn't get any better, Simon. No. It's just appalling. It is hard and, to confuse And there should it. be no cover-up. That's and, it. And those that have covered up, make no two bones about it, need to be held to account for, for the sake of our police service nationally. But one last thing I will add, and I think it's so important to, to bear in mind, the way that police officers are operating now, 23 years later, with regards to, you know, statements and things like that, it's nothing like to what it was when I first joined. Um, you, you know, be absolutely crystal clear about that. And th- thankfully, thankfully, an event such as that tragedy at Hillsborough should never be repeated because, you know, so much has come from the Taylor report and football 
um, management, uh, you know, police officers who are managing those events, has completely changed beyond recognition. It couldn't happen again, then, you don't think? I don't think it, okay. it certainly should never, ever happen again with all the um, Checks. features that have been put in place, Simon. OK, no. well, that's, that's, uh, we take some heart from that, Mike. And uh, thanks a lot for your time, and uh, cheers for talking to us on the programme tonight. You're that's welcome. Mike Panett, former police officer himself.